Today on Conversations That Convert, we're talking to Paul Sanneman from Contractor Staffing Source, and we'll be reviewing the six myths of hiring for the construction industry. Let's get started. Welcome to Conversations That Convert. Every week, we'll spend about 10 to 15 minutes tackling relevant lead generation, marketing, and sales topics for remodelers, home improvement companies, and home builders. Conversations That Convert is brought to you by Builder Lead Converter, your perfect sales assistant. And now, here's Rick and Diana. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Conversations That Convert. Diana is off today, but we do have a very special guest joining us. I would like to introduce Paul Sanneman from Contractor Staffing Source. Paul, welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate being here. Yes, and it's 5 a.m. where you are, so we're very appreciative. It is. It's definitely early. Well, you know... We're in Hawaii. Everybody here starts at five, but the good news is we get into two. So that's get like, you know, right. Then you go to the you... ocean. And every time in the winter, people, you know, when you say you live in Hawaii, people go, oh, right. Because, you know, it's like, I know it's where you are, but it's always like, you know, the lowest it ever gets is 68 and the highest it ever gets is 85. So can't complain. It's beautiful country. That is that is for sure. So uh, we are talking today again about hiring and we're going to get into the challenges that builders or modelers face when hiring and, and you, as I understand it, with Contractor Staffing Source, um, are the largest recruiter in the construction industry. Is that right? Yeah, I, I didn't start out that way, but it sort of ended up that way. Um, and, you know, it was funny because I only started this business like four years ago, right? I've been a coach for 40 years. I'm an old guy. I've, been, I've worked with thousands of contractors. And what happened, Rick, was about four years ago, um, I could build businesses because we're looking at marketing between, you know, to a million to 10 million, million to 15 million, did a bunch. But the problem was growing a business doesn't do you any good unless you have people to do the work, right? right. So my clients couldn't, they, I could get them bigger, but they couldn't find employees. So I said, how hard can that be? So I went out and found some really good software, found some, you know, sort of best practices. And a lot of it depends on, you know, how you use the software. So I gave my software to the clients and they totally messed it up. They didn't have time to do it, right? So I went, okay, fine. Well, I put a guy in my garage, literally put a guy in my garage. And now we have about 30 people on the team. They're all over the world. I think we could run 400 job openings any given day. And we usually go through two or 3,000 resumes a week. Um, we hire like 10 people a week. And it's just all the US and Canada. And it grew a lot because apparently there's a big demand for this. And we're pretty good at it. I think last year we hired about 480 people and only, people, only 17 didn't work out. And that's because I actually do the best practice of hiring which is something that a lot of contractors don't do. The problem is they say there's no people, just like people say there's nobody wants their service. It's a process problem. If people use the right process, you can find all the people you need. Like if people use the right process, you can find all the clients you need. And you know, Rick, if you have all the clients you need and all the employees you need, and you have great clients and great people, it's a really great industry to be in. But if you don't have good clients, you're not marketing effectively. And you don't have good people, it's really hard. You know, that's so it's so true. So we met at the Job Tread Connect conference and started talking about things. And I, you know, I'm a client of yours right now too, I guess full Thanks. disclosure, uh, which is great because I get to see your service from as a as a client and from the inside perspective. And you're helping me uh, find some people for our team as as we are growing. Uh, I used to hire people when I was doing my coaching and I was subcontracting sales management, I would hire salespeople. And you're right, it is a process. It's an absolute process. And it's real easy to see a bright, shiny object and go like, oh, this is my guy or this is my gal. And you make that hire and you start the training process and you get six months into it. And then all of a sudden you realize like, man, the, the person quits or you have to let them go because you just made the worst mistake ever. And so I would always look at that and say, you know, you're going to put yourself backwards. You're, go you're, you're actually going backwards if you make that wrong hire in the front. I understand there's no guarantees. Um, but one of the things that you, we were talking about a little bit before uh, the call here today is you said there's really there's six myths. Well, yeah, there's six. There's six myths. This is I've been in construction all my life. And these are the things that contractors believe that get in the way of them succeeding in hiring. All right. Mm -hmm. I think part of what you went from people think marketing is expensive. Same kind of thing. Right. So it's like it's a myth. But first myth is, you know, only recruit when you need someone. I mean, Contra I've had this problem. Where people go, well, I need a guy. I'm going to recruit for the guy and I'm done. 
That's a myth. Only recruiting someone. There is no successful company I know that doesn't recruit all the time. And if you should recruit all the time, I've been trying to convince people to do that ever since I started this business. I've changed my pricing structure to try to encourage that. But you should always be recruiting. Just don't think you recruit when you need somebody. Um, the second myth is employees are expensive. Oh, I can't afford that guy, right? And that's not true. You can't make any money without employees in this business. They're the best investment you're ever going to make. So employees are not expensive. They're really their best investment you're going to make. Now, the third myth is we can do the recruiting ourselves. How hard is this to do? Man, I put an ad in Indeed. You know, I call the guy a week later and he's already got a job. How come it didn't work out? Right? So it's like, you know, you need to hire somebody, either us or somebody. There's a lot of people that are good at this. I mean, you don't fix your own car, do you, Rick? Usually nowadays, I'm assuming. That's right. You probably do your don't. You don't do your own accounting, I'm guessing. Nope. And also a lot of subcontracts, you have no problem with them outsourcing even electrical or plumbing or all this kind of stuff. But somehow everybody thinks, oh, I'm a great recruiter. How hard can this be? It's like marketing. You know, you get somebody knows what the heck they're doing. It's way, it's the best investment you're going to make. Um, the next one, just I really like this one. This myth is recruit within the construction industry. I run into this all the time. I want a, a selection coordinator that has, you know, five years experience in construction or I'm an office manager. It is not true. Um, for example, DR and St. Lenar, those big companies, they will not even hire everybody with construction fears because they don't want them to learn the wrong way. They only hire people without experience. Uh, example, in our business, we've hired a lot of um, selection coordinators, office managers. Think about this, Rick, a wedding planner, right? Think about a wedding planner. Wedding planner has to get a bunch of people together, the band, the, you know, the flower yeah. person. The cater, and no offense, those industries aren't the most stable. You can't count on everybody's going to be at the right time, right? So the sort of flaky industries, they all got to be at the right time at the right place, and everybody has to be happy, and it's got to come off well and look good. Sounds like a remodel to me, right? Yeah. And right. the thing is, people do that because they want to do that, and they have the talent to do that. So we've hired a lot of wedding planners who just killed it as selection coordinators, office managers, that kind of thing. So. It is not true. Go go outside the industry. You're looking for who people are, not what they know. You can teach them stuff, but you can't teach them to be a human, good human being. So hire who they are, not what they know, and look outside the industry. The next one, oh, this gets everybody in trouble. It's hire fast and fire slow. You just talked about it earlier. You hire fast because you're desperate. I don't hire the guy until after I need him. And oh my God, I need the guy. And mm -hmm. so you hire fast because you need the guy right away. That's not really bad news, Rick. The really bad news is firing slow. You get yeah. the guy in the organization, right? And the guy or woman in the organization, you brought him on because you were desperate. Now you've been, spent years building this culture. Everybody's honest or trusting. There, You've built this great culture which has taken you years to create. Then you put in the guy or the woman who's like, not that good. You know, they only lie sometimes. They only steal occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> and they just show it, show it once in a while. And what happens is it kills your culture because everybody goes, look at this guy shows up late. He, he gets paid. This guy, you know, stole the nail gun. Nobody noticed. This guy, you know, lied to a client. Nobody seemed to care. So it just destroys your culture. And that's the world's worst employee, you know, bad enough to keep, what is that? Good enough to keep or bad enough to fire. And they kill your culture, but you sl fire slow because you haven't got anybody else to replace it. Mm -hmm. So not only does it, it, the person not work out, that's not the worst part. The worst part is he kills the culture you spent years developing. And it's really hard to recuperate from that. The truth is you should hire slow. Literally take the time, find the people, always be recruiting, make, make the decisions slowly so you've got the right person. Then if they're not working out, fire fast. Do not hesitate, do not wait, fire fast. And I've done consulting for many, many years and many times, I can't tell you how many times, but lots, they've got this world's worst employee. And then the conversation is about John or Mary. Oh, John's great this week. Oh, I can't, I can't, John did that. Oh, John crashed a truck. Oh, but he wasn't drunk. I mean, it's like crazy, right? And they keep this person on for years because they don't want to go through the emotional pain of firing them. And you know, so it's interesting. What's interesting, Paul, I just I just, just heard a quote from uh, Donald Trump, and he was talking about the three types of employees he had. He goes, there's bad employees, there's good employees, and there's great employees. 
he goes great employees he goes you can never pay them too much because they're going to take they're going to catapult your business they're going to take you where you could never go without them he goes we love great employees he goes bad employees they're easy they're bad i fire them he goes because good employees are the worst because they're not bad enough where you fire them but they're not great and they kind of just slog along he goes good employees are the worst you know kind of that milk toast type employee well the problem is the, the good employees i talked the other day and he has a he has a production building company and he did you have the peter principle is you promote level people to the level of incompetence and they stay there because you can't demote them because you promoted them and you can't promote them because you're not doing a good job so you get an organization of people that just don't quite do it he his production builder builds like four or five houses a week and he's down to like three houses a week his production builder he promoted his superintendent to director of construction and he isn't cutting it but he's a friend of his he's been around a couple of years oh, yeah. and his whole organization is dying because this guy knows to know how to build or has created a process to build a house today he just can't pull it off and it's not i mean he got promoted to his level of incompetency now he's a friend of the owner so he doesn't want to let him go he doesn't want to fire the guy but he's killing his whole organization and it happens all the time. I finally convinced him to hire a new guy and demote this guy and say, look, I'll give you the same amount of pay, but just you're not cutting the job. And I mean, I would ask everybody listening to this podcast a very serious question. Now, Rick, same to you if you have any employees. If you were going to start your organization over today, let's say for whatever reason, everybody let go and you, start, you had started over again today. And now you had to hire back the people that you had before. Anybody that you wouldn't hire back, you should fire. Yeah. And Al, you remember Al Mays? Do you remember Al Mays? He was a coach in the construction for mm -hmm. years. I don't I think he's maybe retired now, but I took a class from his him once and he said he said uh that he threw the question out there. Well, when when should you fire somebody? He says the first time you think about it. <laughs> After, you know, and there's always this, you know, you I'll tell a couple sentences are the phone rings you, oh my god, it's John. You're not excited about the phone, it's John, right? Or John left a message. Oh no. I mean, when you when you hear the person's name, there's this sort of dread that you show up. I mean, like the person only lies 10 percent of the time, but you're never sure when the 10 percent is. So you can't know when to trust him. Right. And those kind of people, if they have working for you, they just kill it because, you know, in your heart that 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 guy should go someplace else. But because you don't include the emotional pain of firing the guy, or you don't have somebody to replace him because you're not recruiting. You keep them on. And I would say in any construction company, that's probably the worst problem I've seen. You may have cash flow problems. You may have marketing problems. But when you have the worst employee problems, it it makes you, that's not fun. Yeah. I've had, you know, because every time you think about that person, you go, <laughs> it's like that. So if you have anybody that you wouldn't rehire, definitely fire them. Yeah. And just, we, had, uh, we used to, uh, you, when I was hiring for, um, uh, I would go in kind of like you as you know do subcontract sales management and i'd evaluate the the sales team you know and i call the like you have the you have the the sales people are really in three levels as well so you have the superstars the ones that you just need to support let them do their thing get out of the way they're gonna they're gonna produce for you then you have the middle which is usually about the 50 percent you're always trying to coach them up to get them up in superstar level then you have the bottom 25 i call those the sales prevention team Mm -hmm. You know, those are the ones out there that are costing you sales. And it's kind of like that bad employee as well. It's like they just drag you down. And like you said, they, they ruin the culture of, of the business. Other people in your in your organization are going to be less productive because of this this person. They're just a cancer. So I would come and sometimes we, we call it the queen bee or the king bee. The one that was thought they were above everyone else and they didn't have to follow in internal rules and policies and they could do whatever they want. You know, the best thing you could do is you say, well, Mr. Builder, you should fire this person. Oh, I can't fire them because they're such a good producer. I'm like, no, you don't understand. They're taking away sales from everything else. Your right. team, if you get rid of them, you're going to be able to produce more. And then you're going to be able to not have to deal with all of the emotional baggage and crap you got to deal with because they're usually prima donnas. And you can hire up that new person, develop them into your next superstar. That's going to follow the way that you want to run your company. And I, I like the sports analogy. It is a team effort. It's not a solo effort, right? And <clears throat> I have an example. It's on my, my kid's soccer team, but I think it's relevant. They had this kid who was, one, he was not easy to deal with for sure. And he always hogged the ball was playing soccer. He'd get the ball, wouldn't give it to anybody else. And he was just really difficult. And he and so the coach got rid of him. 
He says, I can't have this guy on my team. Everybody freak. And they've won way more games after they lost the guy than they did because he was killing the team. Even mm-hmm. though he was the star, he wasn't a team player. He didn't ever pass the ball. He didn't he didn't help build the team spirit. He was always the, the guy who was he knew was better than everybody else. And it just killed the team. So, you know, construction is definitely a team sport. And look, you should all, you know, what team isn't always recruiting or always having a bitch? That's, yeah, that's, 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 that's a good point. So let me go over the six items one more time just for our listeners. What were they? Okay, one is the myth is only recruit you need, you need someone. That's not true. You should be recruiting all the time. The second one, employees are expensive. They're not. Best investment you're going to make. Third is we can do the recruiting ourselves. That's not true. Hire somebody that's good at it. It's going to be great expenditure of funds. Next, recruit within the construction industry. Not true. You can recruit, you know, just put construction experience preferred, but not required. Next one is hire fast, fire slow. It's just the opposite. Hire slow, take your time, find the right person. If they're the wrong person, boom, let them go. Fire fast. Next is recruiting is a project that ends. It doesn't ever end. You should always be looking for people all the time. So if you get rid of those myths, you'd probably be better at hiring people. Yeah, so I always I always found that some of my same thing. I would go to a builder and we would we would put together a, a, an ad and start recruiting for salespeople. And the same thing was always like, Rick, I want to hire someone with experience. And I would say, Well, why? Because then they'll know what they're doing. So they can come in here and I don't have to train them, and they're just going to take and run with that. I said, What you get when you hire someone with experience is you are bringing over all their bad habits they developed from somebody else. So now what I have to do is I have to untrain those bad habits. And now I have to train them up in the way you want to do things. So what would be easier, having to untrain and retrain or just finding someone with the right characteristics we're looking for and then train them up uh, from there? Right. I mean, Rick, example is a project manager. He's been in the business 30 years, shows up with his yellow pad, says, I do not need anything but a yellow pad. I've been doing this for a long time. Just let me run the project and stay out of my way. This computer stuff, I don't need it. I'm good without it. And it just kills your organization. If you got a little time, I'd like to go over the, the best recruiting practices if you have time to do that, right? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So I've learned what you need to do. Now, whether you have us do it for you, which I recommend because it's better than doing it yourself, or you do it yourself, you got to follow this process, in my opinion, in order to hire a good employee. Never once, first is write, you know, the art of writing a job ad. It's got a lot easier with ChatGPT. You go to ChatGPT and say, write me an ad for a project manager like your HR professional. But you've got to write a killer ad. Again, it is an ad. It is not a description. The idea is you're getting somebody to quit the current job they've got to come to work for you. So it's a lead with things like, are you not appreciated where you are? Do you feel like you're better than the rest of your employees? Is your boss not treating you well? You need to lead with something that's going to appeal to the person you want. Don't say looking for a project manager must have five years experience, blah, blah, blah. That's a job description. An ad. An ad is the idea supposed to get somebody to buy your stuff, right? So Mm -hmm. it is a job ad. Make sure you write a great great job ad. That's the first one. Don't use convention. Uh, The second one, where do you post a job ad? Post it everywhere. We post it on 100 100 and some job boards plus LinkedIn plus, you know, all the social media. We do it on, you know, what is it? Monster. And we search your databases, pl- place it everywhere you possibly can. You even put a poster in your suppliers thing. Don't just put it in deed and figure done. That's important. Post everywhere. The next one is, this is the most important and the hardest to do probably. Respond immediately. Don't, you know, when, when people, you know, we respond to people, we do it in real time. If somebody, you know, applies for us, and they hit send 10 seconds later to get, thank you for applying for ABC company. We really appreciate your resume. Do it immediately. It's just like marketing. How fast do you follow up a good lead? Yep, a week? Right. I'm not going to work. <laughs> and and, and uh, just to interject here, so I know you're – so I hired you. You're helping me right now. So we have the software I log into, and I kind of – and I do it almost daily as I get notifications. But when that, when that ad response comes in, that candidate comes in responding to that ad, then there's an AI built into it where they, right. they get that – immediate email it looks like it says hey just want to let you know we received your application right i mean just we're so, we're so it's, it's important you respond immediately do not wait okay it's just like if you get a marketing call you don't call them back three days later because they've already yeah. gotten somebody else and all the good people also look at it this way right? if you're applying you must be applying for 10 companies not for one right when you're looking for a service you're calling you're going down google and calling five people 
if you if you apply for 10 companies and only one says thank you for applying we're getting it right back to you which company looks the best to work for yeah exactly somebody who's yeah. on the ball okay so respond in in minutes not days and it's hard to do because we have to go through we go through three or four you know applications a week three or four thousand applications a week we have to go through two applications to find a guy so the reality is what owner or person in the office has time 24 seven to call these people back right away it's just not realistic because it, it, again, there's an average of, I think, 200 applicants every time we hire a person, okay? Um, the next one, selection process. It's key. Use an assessment. There's a lot of good psychological tools out there. We use an, an assessment that has a lot of AI in it. I'll know about you than your mom if you take this thing. So get a good assessment process. There's certainly, there's a Colby, there's DISC, there's a bunch of stuff out there. Make sure you do a good psychological assessment of the person before you hire them. The technology is there. And we have, I think, the best, but it doesn't matter. Find some technology so you know the person's intelligence, their integrity, you know, what, what, whether the right person and I for the job. Do a really good analysis of that person. And it's, you know, people just don't use the tools, and that makes it really hard. Um, the next one is after you, you know, do a good analysis as far as uh, an assessment goes, do a video interview. We have video interviews that we do for everybody, you know. And we structure those video interviews depending on each person. So we always do video interviews. Um, Cause you can, there's some things you can't find in an assessment. I mean, what do they look like? What do they come across with? I mean, what are they, how, how are they as a human being? You can't tell some of those things unless you watch a video, okay? And then always do reference checks. Because, you know, I had one guy that hired a bookkeeper, embezzled him, hired the next bookkeeper embezzled him and he went to the DA's office and he said, look, didn't you realize a book of you just hired got fired for embezzlement? I mean, come on. Right. <laughs> so it's like, you know, do reference checks and background checks. Okay. Yeah. So if you do all those things, you're much more likely to find a good person. I think there's lots of great people out there. As I said, we generally don't have problems in finding good people because we follow the process, but most contractors literally don't have time to do this. And if even if you give them the tools, that's why I did this company, because I give you the tools. You, I'll give you a good assessment, you know, good how to do all this stuff. They have time to do it. It's like a, a half time job for anybody, at least. You know, and we when we have got a client, there's four people on the team. There's a recruiter. Well, there's a person who scans resumes 24 seven. They have an assistant. There's another person that does all the uh, applicant facing stuff, makes them take the resume assessments calls them does make sure the applicants know we're interested in them that's the uh, account manager and then there's a specialist you talk to every week so we have four people on the team just to hire for a guy right yeah and yeah. can you picture in your company who in the heck's going to do that one of the things i noticed as i'm going through and i'm you know you you, you look at the candidates and again i'm, I'm the, using your software so i see the resume i see um, how they responded. I can look at the assessment. So, you know, and I'm looking at this, I'm like, number one, I'm really so happy that I hired a recruiter because I need somebody to protect me from myself. Because sometimes you look at a resume and you fall in love with a candidate. And then you start to overlook some of the red flags that are popping up, you know, as you're following this process. And it's so nice to have, uh, uh, you know, I'm working with uh, Carell just to say, hey, what do you think of this candidate? What are these assessments? What do you see? Are there some red flags here? And where then if you if that person says, hey, you know what? This looks like a really good candidate. Pursue them. So it's like, OK, he said or, you know, Rick, the resume looks good, but this, this and this popped up. So this is a candidate I would probably, you know, not stay away from. And one of you know, those behavior traits, you know, that I I found with the assessment that uh, that you're using. I mean, those are phenomenal. Be able to look at somebody's, you know, do they blame others? Do they take responsibility? To, um, you know, how cooperative are they? Are they willing to follow leadership? Uh, are they? Um, I forget the other one. Loyalty. You know, some of the things in there. It's like, wow, that's just amazing. You you can find out the characteristics, the personality traits. Because I always look at it and say, if I have the right characteristics, I can train somebody up. I right. can coach them up. I can train them up. But I need somebody that's going to believe in the mission of what we're doing here and is going to be loyal. And if there's a bump in the road, they're not going to lose it or blame somebody else, but they're going to actually be professional. And right. that is, I think, you know, one of the really biggest advantage of really partnering when you hire someone, because man, 
you talk, look at your fee. If you hire the wrong person, we were talking about this, you know, you're six months into it. You realize you hired the wrong person. You spend all that money hiring the wrong person. You put all that time and effort into coaching and training them. And six months later, you just went backwards. Now you right. have to completely start over. All that time and energy and money that you spent on that person for six months is all gone. I mean, no. that's why you do it. You know, we, we do it monthly. It's it's much more if you do it like on a commit for a year because I people think people should do that. We have a really I consider a low monthly fee compared to. I mean, a lot of people say I hired more to part, hire my less correct my project manager than I've hired you for all paid you all year. You know what I mean, it's way because we use a lot of our labor. We use a lot of you know AI, so we can do it way better and cheaper than almost anybody out there. That's why I've grown so well. So I mean, if you're going to do it yourself, at least follow the best practices. Um, that will make sure it happens. And again, there's plenty of great people out there. Now it's harder to find the average, I think, employee in construction is like 45 years old and it's getting tougher, but it's sort of like if you haven't got enough leads, it's because your marketing isn't doing its job, right? Or if you're not converting, there are systems out there on how, how to be very successful. I just talked to an interesting venture capitalist the other day and he said, and he, you know, he has like lots of money, millions. He's going to do any business he wants to. He's going into the roofing business in the, in the middle of the country. I said, why? He goes, look at the old guys. They don't know. They, they've stuck in their old ways. They don't know how to, you know, market. They don't know how to hire people. They're just not good at business, but they've been there forever. Not much. Mm -hmm. The other people are two guys in a truck. They don't have the right systems, the right things. They know what they're doing. They just, I can go in and just kill it. I could become the you know words the you know largest roofer in my market in like four years because I've got good systems. I know how to find good people, how to find good clients. I've got the systems, and I can make like forty percent margin on this stuff. He says I can't think of a better business to be in than roofing, and I'm going that makes sense, right? But so construction is a great industry. There's huge opportunity, but just make sure you use the right systems, and it's already done for you. Find a great marketing system, find a great recruiting system, get good clients, good employees. And you'll do well. But unless you have somebody help you with your marketing, which I highly recommend, and have somebody help you with your recruiting like us, it's going to be tough. Because if you can't find a good client, you take clients you shouldn't take, which we've all had those. That's a disaster, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And you take them and they like cost you money, don't pay their bill, they're difficult to deal with. Bad clients are terrible. Same with the employees. You have employees who don't show up, they, you know, they lie occasionally, it makes life difficult. So again, this is a great industry if you've got great clients, great employees, and there's systems out there to do, do both. And so I suggest you do both because that way you'll be a happy contractor versus somebody who's not having a good day. Very um, nice way to end this. And I, I just think, you know, one other thing, which uh, was one of your, um, you know, I can't afford this employee. You know, I think that's a sticking point for a lot of people. And honestly, I've looked at that as well, you know, like we're looking at what the hiring needs I have. But one of the things I keep reminding myself is, is like, you know, what is the highest and best use of my time? You know, where should I be focusing my time? Because if I don't have that great employee to do those things that I shouldn't be doing, sure, can I do them? Yes. But is it the highest and best use of my time? No. I'm never going to be able to make the add efficiencies into my uh, my my business. I'm going to make product improvements or come up with new offerings, improve my marketing, basically run my business. Uh, right. And so we used to say from a salesperson's perspective is like most salespeople, when they are meeting directly with the client, they're $500 an hour people. Right. So I would say, to the I said, why are you having your salesperson do change orders? You can hire a $15 an hour it, person. To change yeah, orders. I like the things, Rick, if you don't have an administrative assistant, you are one. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, yeah, anything that you can delegate should be delegated. Just focus on your core competencies. Right. And, you know, focus on running that business, growing the business and ultimately getting yourself out of the day to day so that you can really be a business owner and, and run it as more of a CEO type, type right. person. But, well, it's hard to make that transition sometimes from craftsman to entrepreneur. It's a tough road for some people. But if you're going to succeed, you're going to have to pull it off. Yeah. And it's it's always at least a, in my perspective, it's always that Ramallah doing a million and they want to get, you know, they, they're pretty much do, they built their company up so high. But now they're at the point where they really got to hire some help. They want to take it to the next level. They want to get to three, five, eight, ten million dollars. That home builder is doing three, four million. Now they want to get up to the good ten, twenty million dollars uh, a year. That's the leap right there. I see is that you have to hire people, and yeah, you can make a lot of mistakes by hiring the wrong people and sell yourself back. So Absolutely. very, 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 very wise words, Paul. Anything else you want to you want to finish with here, Paul? Well, I would say I love this quote that. 
smart people learn from their mistakes and wise people learn from the mistakes of others. <laughs> My last question was any words of wisdom? There it is. That is where learn from the mistakes of others. Don't make them yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Paul, we will put a link below here, but if somebody is interested in your services, wants to get in touch with you, what is the best way? They can go to contractorstaffingsource.com. Um, they can email me. My, my email is paul at paulsanneman.com. Or they can, my cell phone literally is 415-599-9006. I'll take calls. Just make sure I'm in Hawaii, so don't call too early. Um, and again, you know, just we'll talk to you about what you need to do. If you want it yourself, fine. We'll explain what you need to do. If you want us to do it, fine. But, you know, if you're having problems finding employees, trust me, it's you. It's not the market. <laughs> and if you want to get some help, it can be, there's no, we have no problem finding great employees for everybody. I said, you know, we hired what, four and eight people last year, only 17 that didn't work out. That's not an accident. The industry's average is probably less than 50% or it's like 95% just because we use our processes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're having a problem finding employees, don't blame the market. Don't blame the industry. You know, when, when, when you're pointing your finger, at, you know, someone's four feet, was it three fingers are pointing back at you. It's all about you. So take the time and energy to do what you need to do to fix the problem because it isn't outside of you. It's your practices that are the problem. Very, very true. Very, very true. So we'll put your link below here. Uh, get in touch with Paul. Talk to him about your hiring needs. And, and uh, he's got a great system. I'm using it right now. And, and I'm very confident we're going to hire four people here probably in the next 30 to 60 days. Uh, so it's really cool great. to see how that process and system works. So thanks for my for brothers, me. pardon me. I appreciate being. I said thanks for having me. I appreciate being here. Oh well, yeah, absolutely. This is great, great information. And for my brothers and sisters in Christ, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all always. We'll see you next time on Conversation.